Great, great. Uh, cool. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, this will be a little bit at the other end of the spectrum from the previous talk. So I saw a lot of people raise their hands about being entrepreneurs. Um, how many people here are working with established companies that are struggling with what to do with AI? Okay, so this is a little bit more for that audience. Um, everybody here is convinced about the value of AI, or at least pretty much everyone, so I won't spend time on that. Um, I will talk about two things though. One is uh, artificial intelligence versus augmented intelligence. And then the other is, uh, for those companies, how to actually get the value out of augmented intelligence um, and change the way your business performs. Uh, so a little bit of a, the down arrow, we good. Um, a little bit of a story on, on where we are on augmented intelligence. So um, when IBM built Deep Blue and beat the best chess player in the world, uh, we all believe that ushered in the era of uh, artificial intelligence, meaning the computer is smarter and the computer will replace human intellect. Uh, over the next couple of years, the chess community started playing with not replacing the intelligence, but how do you fit together the human intelligence with the artificial intelligence? Um, and this, this podium is from a tournament that happened a couple of years later where um, the, super the, the supercomputer didn't win. Um, somewhat as expected, a uh, a chess grandmaster with some computer support can beat a supercomputer, at least at this point in time. Uh, the somewhat surprising result was the winner of this uh, did not have the best chess players and did not have the best computer. The winner was a group of amateur players with some personal computers. What they did have um, was an intentional process for how they would work together and how they would uh, learn the moves uh, and, co and coach between the human uh, and the computers. Uh, and so that signaled that it's, it, it's not necessarily artificial intelligence, it's augmented intelligence that's gonna give the most value going forward. It also signaled that the best computer doesn't win, it's actually about the process and the way that you design the interaction that will win. Um, and so what I'll go into in, in this talk is about what we think that process is starting to look like for companies that are trying to incorporate augmented intelligence to the way they work. First, uh, why are we here? I think we're all con convinced that there's value there. Um, I just wanna say that at the, you know, at the corporate level, uh, what we see, especially in healthcare, is uh, augmented intelligence is blockbuster level impact. So most companies that look at this uh, find a billion dollar or multi-billion dollar value in the long run uh, to their bottom line of using augmented intelligence across their workforce. They also are looking very short term. So um, I'm, I'm myself in the life sciences, this applies across a lot of industries, but 40% of pharma companies are including positive benefits of AI this year. So it's happening right now. Um, and I've been around for a few of the tech hype cycles, um, the original machine learning, uh, virtual reality, metaverse. Uh, the difference now with artificial intelligence is both of these. The magnitude is much bigger now, the anticipated magnitude, and the speed at, at which it's happening uh, is much faster. So uh, because of that, pretty much every company has gotten into the game. Within life sciences, uh, you can see some of the functions. The red is the percentage of companies that have use cases that they are exploring. Uh, the purple is they have those use cases implemented. Of course, there's some natural drop off because it takes time to go from development to production. But there are also some structural reasons that there's such a big drop off. Uh, and, and we've done the survey uh, across companies. The number one reason that companies are having trouble getting value from AI and the number one reason by far is operating model. It's not that the technology doesn't work, it's that we don't know how to use the technology. And so again, it's that process question, how do we actually engage with these tools in a way that drives meaningful um, business value? Uh, so that process, that motivation, that's why uh, I with my team have been working on what does that process look like? What's the playbook for a company, especially in the life sciences, that wants to get the value uh, from artificial intelligence? Um, so this is just the the, I won't go into the work that we did. We sampled a, a, a lot of uh, resources on this. Uh, experience over the past two years, some companies are succeeding, some companies are still struggling. Um, we looked at experiences from the big tech companies. Uh, within my firm, we have 
people who are doing hands-on AI product development. Uh, if you follow the money, uh, we've worked with eight of the 10 largest private equity funds in the world on how artificial intelligence changes the way that their portfolio companies um, need to behave and change their investment posture going forward. So the amount of energy and the amount of capital pouring into this um, is, is really unprecedented. Uh, where we learn the most is from the companies that are uh, pursuing this ambitiously. Uh, so you, we, we've sampled across a couple hundred companies to see what's working um, and what to avoid. And within that subset, uh, where we really want to pay attention is the companies that are being successful. Um, and so we have a couple samples. There are companies in life sciences. There are companies in other industries. Um, and along the bottom, these are results that we see in the field now. So um, the second one isn't a company that had, you know, they've always had an objective about accelerating their time to market. And I'll talk about the link between the objective and, and what companies are trying to achieve with AI. They always had that objective. When Gen AI came along, they applied it to the regulatory submissions. And we found that you can get a 90% reduction in the time spent on those kinds of activities. So um, the, these are companies that are, this is where those impact in 2024 kind of uh, examples are. Okay, so then this is, um, this is what the playbook looks like. It's a trilogy, like all good stories. So uh, the first chunk of activities, a bunch of enterprise activities. This is all about setting the stage, figuring out where you wanna focus and putting the foundation in place. Uh, there's a lot going on there and I'll go into some of those. Uh, but the question that I get most often is I get the question from executive leadership that is, there's so much of that going on. What do I need to pay attention to? I, I don't think I should be doing prompt engineering, but also I, I think I need to understand this stuff. And I don't know if I should be making infrastructure decisions. I just don't know. Uh, so what we found is there are, there are a couple of moments of truth where um, the leadership really needs to uh, jump in, pay attention, make decisions, and, and lead the organization forward. Um, and uh, back to that blockbuster theme, the, the value will be there if the leadership does those things, but it can't be something that the leadership says, we, we have a hands-off approach in all of this, because it, it's just much more meaningful change um, for most companies uh, than other, uh, you know, other, other technologies that have come along. If you have those two things in place, then you're into building the products, proof of concept, going to MVP, and finally scaling the products and creating that augmented workforce that delivers a different um, business value. So I won't go through, I, I, for this crowd, I think I'll do a little bit of uh, the early part of the playbook, how to get started, and it's a tech conference, so I'll also do a little bit of um, the technology choices. And if we have more time, we could spend time on others. Uh, so the first thing that the, that the leadership team has to do is make a decision about um, how ambitious you want to be. So you saw the numbers. Basically, every company is in this bottom level. You're exploring use cases. You have people playing with chat GPT. Um, and if you do that, it's a good thing. You will get incremental um, productivity out of that. Uh, if you don't do that, you'll, if that's all you do, you're stuck in what we call the use case trap which is great, you get marginal productivity improvements, but you do not get a uh, massive difference in how you're going about your business. Uh, the companies that are succeeding right now are in the second phase, they're building. So I'll talk about products versus use cases, but they are identifying ways that you can put use cases together to change the way that you are marketing your products, to change the way that you're um, progressing products through development. Um, and then at the top, that's where companies are taking a step back and saying, this isn't necessarily about one solution or one tool. This is about uh, a workforce that now is augment an augmented intelligence workforce that can achieve things that my workforce today can't achieve. And therefore, uh, in the second row, you might be able to use AI to achieve business outcomes you already specified. In the top row, you can now achieve things that you never conceived of before. Uh, and as an example, uh, we've been working with one of the big food and beverage companies, and, and they follow, they're following this path. They started at the bottom uh, with use cases, and they have some really neat ways that customers can kind of interact with marketing content. Um, they've used Gen AI for global content management. But where this is headed is they talk about 
achieving what they call mass personalization of marketing at scale. And so if you think of like a Coke or a Pepsi ad where typically it's on a billboard or you have an ad that is um, hitting a massive audience you know, during a sporting event, something like that, personalized marketing is a huge difference in the way that they think about it. It's gonna affect everybody in their marketing and sales organization, but they believe it will also massively affect their ability to attract customers in a good way. Uh, so if you've set your ambition and if you're up on the higher level and you're ambitious about things, uh, the next question is where to get started. Um, and most executives that I hear from say, I'm just completely inundated. Every tech company out there in the world wants to talk to me. Every uh, design firm wants to talk to me. All of my employees have ideas and I have no idea where to actually get started. Uh, and from what we've, and, and there are many ways you can think about it. You could go after the biggest high potential use cases. You could look for the most feasible or the lowest risk. Uh, the good news is I think the answer is actually pretty simple on this. Uh, so first you have to figure, you first make a choice about where you're going to focus, which is, um, it's pretty easy. Your business already has objectives and they're typically clear and typically most people in the business are bought into them. You don't need to change your strategy around AI. You can start by using AI to achieve the strategies you've already um, selected. So if your company is already serious about speed to market, use Gen AI to improve speed to market. If your company is serious about activating patients, use AI to better target and communicate with your patients. Um, what that does is any of those objectives isolate a part of the business that you'll focus in. So if you say it's speed to market, great, now we're working in the clinical and regulatory organization. If it is HCP engagement, now it's the, you know, the marketing and the sales force. Uh, which then, then you have to figure out, um, you know, what's the product that we want to build and again, there are many ways to think about this. Uh, the one that uh, I recommend to everyone is just start where you can show early results. Um, and there's two reasons for that. One is, as much as the folks in this room are enthusiastic about artificial intelligence, not everybody in your company is. So you need to show things that are exciting early and show the value to bring people along. Uh, the other is, uh, the technology is just moving so fast. If you're planning on a three or a six month basis, you're going to be wrong. Um, I was working with a company that was thinking about, are there interesting things we can do with sort of like vision detection? Let's build something like that. Um, and the, the capabilities weren't there. The language models didn't have that yet. They went and worked on another use case for a couple months. And in the midst of that, uh, OpenAI released a whole new vision set that totally changed the way that they would think about that application. So if you, um, you know, and this is, if you, if you were to plot uh, options for your company on a two by two, um, but in general, in terms of getting started, if you are working to achieve the business objectives that your company already said are important, and if you are going to show early value and early progress against them, uh, you're headed in the right direction. That. Um, so this is, I'll do an example I, about product versus use case, because this is an important um, distinction. And I, I'll do it as an example. So you know, we talked about choosing your business outcome first. Uh, this is a company that I was working with uh, has incredibly complex therapies in oncology, and their corporate goal has always been get the right patients on therapy faster, which is hard. It requires a lot of education with the end. Um, tailoring information to individual physicians. If you pick that as your objective, it's pretty clear what parts of your organization will be impacted by augmented intelligence. Uh, you know, it's your marketing team, it's your sales team, it's the medical legal review. Uh, so then this is where you get into the distinction. If you, if you looked at any one of those areas, you could come up with an interesting use case. So if you look at the marketers, you would say, what I really want to do is give them an AI tool that creates micro-segmented content. If you look at the, um, you know, the, the reviewers, you'd say, you know what, I want an, an automated intelligent review tool. Um, those use cases, which are in these kind of rectangles, those themselves won't let you achieve the goal of getting patients on to therapy faster if you are able to combine them into a tool that does something like, for any situation you go into, provides context-aware engagement for that HCP, 
That's what will drive the outcome. I have five minutes, excellent. Um, so uh, it's a lot of times I hear companies talking about use cases and I'm always pushing, what's the product that uh, takes on a chunk of activity that your workforce is doing and drives to a meaningful outcome? Uh, so augmented intelligence, again, this is not about replacing your workforce. There's a spectrum from, there are some things like strategy and applying medical judgment that we will never hand off to, uh, to a computer. There are some things that computers do really well with minimal supervision. Most of the stuff is in this augmentation in the middle. It's a human who's giving direction to a system. It's a human who's iterating on content with the system or it's a system doing a bunch of work and the human's monitoring things as they go. And so uh, once, you've had, once you have that product, you'll be able to see all of the changes that happen and what is the, uh, what's the new set of responsibilities that your augmented workforce has. It's gonna be a lot of change um, to go through. Uh, I urge you to look at some of our, our writings on change management or applying that to artificial intelligence. Um, for this crowd, it's a tech crowd, so uh, one question is, how much of this is like build versus buy? Should we wait until somebody comes along with a solution? Uh, the answer is it's not quite that simple. It varies by component of the AI product, which is the row, and then the axis, the x-axis is the development stage. And so uh, what we see is for the AI products, the prompt engineering, the interface, the experience, do not wait for somebody to come to you with a solution. Get your hands dirty, start working on it. Uh, you can, with, especially with um, LLMs, you can get to proof of concept really quickly. Figure out what you need for your company, and then you can go and see if there's, a, there's somebody who provides it. But especially in the life sciences, there are so many ways that companies differ in terms of what they want, their risk tolerance, the, datas, the, the data sources that they're wiring together that everything's gonna be super customized on that top row. So there's a lot more building in artificial intelligence now than there was in previous technologies like RPA. Um, the models, I talk to people all the time, we're like, I wanna get started, I, I need a medical model to do this, or I need to fine tune a model to do it. The generalist models are so strong that we almost always get through MVP without needing to tailor the model, and maybe you do that later as you're in production. Um, An infrastructure for sure uh, is something that uh, outside of special situations, uh, you should not be rolling on your own. Um, the, uh, so there's a whole bunch, I went through only a couple parts of the playbook and then there's a whole bunch of others uh, but if you, are, if you are on the leadership team and you're making decisions about this, what are the things that matter to you? There are a couple things where you need to lean in. Uh, the first is setting that ambition and, and deciding which objectives you're going to pursue because that then narrows the field for everything your company is doing. Um, then there is uh, reviewing the products and setting expectations for the products. So if your goal previously was... Um, accelerating our regulatory submissions by X number of months. Now with AI, X should get multiplied by some number and, and the leadership team has to set that expectation so then the product teams can go um, and work against it. Uh, there's not necessarily funding available for this, but we do believe centralized funding is necessary to get the proof of concept moving. Then you get into sort of the month six-ish range where um, you're making decisions about what to fund to scale and what infrastructure you need. You can't make those decisions until you have decisions about what the products are. And then later, it's about avoiding the use case trap and making sure there are new, there's a whole um, pipeline of products uh, behind the, the first few. So hit a couple of things. Main things uh, that I want to leave you with. One is it's not uh, artificial intelligence, it's augmented intelligence. Um, so this is going to affect everyone in the way that we work. Um, it's pretty easy to figure out where to start. Just start where there's already energy. Uh, the generative AI tools are so broadly applicable, you don't have to worry about will it be applicable here. Just figure out how they're applicable in the areas that matter. Um, 
I, I don't want to hear about use cases. I want to hear about products. I want to hear about products that are at the functional level or an end-to-end -end process level that change the way a big chunk of your workforce um, gets their job done. Uh, it's not build versus buy, unfortunately. It's going to be building and buying and iterating. Um, and uh, I'll just uh, end on the last one, which is there is blockbuster potential. We recognize that. Um, but the same way that when a company has a blockbuster product suddenly show up, the leadership team has to handle that in a way that's very different from their other products. Uh, I didn't talk about how the economics and the processes around AI are different from other products. So even more so than ever, to get that value, uh, you need the processes in place, you need the governance, you need your leadership team to be really hands deep on it. So um, I think we're learning a lot. We continue to learn. I think there's a handbook now uh, for how to do it. It'll, as I said, plan, it's hard to plan on a long term uh, given how fast the technology is moving. Uh, and I'm just really excited to see how um, all of you carry this forward and, I'm, you know, and, and how augmented intelligence is going to make a difference for the kind of work that you do. So.